Welcome back to another episode of Tackling the World. Uh, today we are in Kagoshima. Kagoshima is in the very southern tip of Japan and my dad lives in Kagoshima. He lives like really south, very much the countryside. Um, and so we're going to be exploring this area. And so we'll just come along and see what countryside Japan looks like. We're starting off at my dad's friend's uh, barber shop. He's got like a little cat salon. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go see Yamasan right now and go check it out. Oh, I see one already. Very young. <laughs> one year, one old. One year old. But mother. She's a one year old mom. Wow. She's pretty. Yeah. Um, this one. Six. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Their eyes are closed down. Six yeah. cats. She has six cats. Oh my gosh. They're colorful. Yeah, they are. grams. <laughs> if you guys want to see updates on the kittens, you can follow Craft Beer Local. I guess it started as a beard channel, but it became his uh, cat channel. <laughs> cat uh, together, together in brewery. At, at the brewery? Oh, yes. Because they killed the rats. Yes. Oh. But now is uh, nothing. But before breweries, together cat cats we'll be checking out his brewery mm. tomorrow as well we'll be going uh, going there to drink some beers obviously if if uh, cat and hair cat <laughs> you, you try you try <laughs> if you want to come get a haircut uh, and uh, see the kittens. Ah, okay. You can come to, and then so they miss it on my YouTube. Ah, it's a bit difficult. <laughs> now we're gonna get a burger uh, nearby. <laughs> Haven't had a burger in a while. See how it is. Yeah, we've it's... actually been in Japan for a little over two weeks. We just haven't been posting as much. We took some time off. Spent it with friends, family. <laughs> oh, we're doing a Trova trip too. Yeah, that too. Pretty busy doing that. And we got food poisoning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> How's it look? Pretty good. Pretty cheesy. The burger's really yummy. Japanese burgers are very fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Yeah. A really good burger hit the spot. There was a lot of Americans in there. <laughs> it threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And there was like the... Uh, there was even a uh, American flag and stuff yeah, in there. <laughs> yeah. Everybody in there is homesick. You yeah. Know, wanted the burgers. Yeah. And yeah, no, and the burgers were good too, so highly recommended. Um, all right, so I think now we're gonna go to like a little market or something. So I guess this is sort of like a half supermarket and half like a farmer's market as well. Like local farmers bring their produce um, over to this place here. So we'll check out what they have. Johnson was wondering if they have some mangoes. She's always in the hunt for mangoes. <laughs> this is actually like a Japanese tostada. <laughs> Taco sent. And we actually have these like in the festivals, you know, the omatsuri and stuff. Mm, yeah. And there'll be like vendors selling this with like a bunch of toppings on it. Oh. So it's like a Japanese tostada. This tomato has a mango color. That is a mango for a second. Oh, 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 here we go. Oh, oh, she found some. Found some. These are cheap. Compared to our one. Oh, it's two for yeah, two for twenty dollars basically. You, you mean the Yakushima one? Whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on here, Google? Uh, Google translates. This. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Google Translate is translating. Do you want to buy more? I think I'm gonna wait till Miyazaki. You're gonna wait till Miyazaki? Yeah. They got a ton of fresh fish. Really clean looking too, like. Super duper fresh. 
check out, look at the eyes on them. Good, look at the scales. Good, look at the tail. Tail shouldn't be dry at all if it's a fresh. And you can also probably look at the gills too. Look at the gills, completely red. Very red, very fresh. And the, the flesh, firm, bounces back. All the telltale signs of fresh fish. And it doesn't smell, that's the good thing. It's past lunchtime, but Japan's supermarkets always have food ready to go, and they are some quality stuff too. They're very delicious and cheap. That's 400 yen. That's like three dollars. Look at this full plate for five, 500 yen, 600 yen. That is cheap, and all, all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a lot of it's sold out since it's past lunch already. But they got curry, got marble tofu. This video is sponsored by Japanese Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's what it is. Yeah, Japanese Athletic Greens. <laughs> and you got some of this stuff that you usually see in the Japanese markets, wasabi and uh, mustard, Japanese mustard, and um, this is yuzu kosho, which is like a fermented chili paste with yuzu. It's really delicious. I use that quite often. Put a little dollop of it in your sushi or on steak is really good. Can I show you something? Okay. All right. What's that? Oh, look at that. 44. Oh, can't you just go pick these up on the... You gotta find them. It's hard to find them. Oh. It's funny. That's like a Japanese kid thing where every kid in Japan has had one of these beetles before. Like when I was a kid in Japan. I had them too, and I also can get them in like in the grub stage, so you watch them develop into the beetle, and it's uh, very common in Japan to to have those as pets. Those ones, and then there's other ones with the with the uh, like they look like rhinos, but with that's a beetle. These are super good, super addicting. They're kind of like Mexican conchas, but kind of better. <laughs> in Japan, you bag your own stuff. Now we're actually at this high school here. Our friend Yamauchi san is friends with a teacher here that teaches like a it's like a cooking club. You wanted to come show us. So we're gonna go check out this cooking club here at this high school. Shoe lockers. TVs up there. Every station. One TV in a classroom. I know, is that you just like rent one and they wheel it in. I know. <laughs> they hit like 10. You, you're talking about projectors. Oh yeah, that too. But no, if you needed a TV, sometimes they roll yeah, one yeah, in. Yeah, they did. Right now we're back at our place where we're staying. Where I'm just staying is actually like, it's all farms. And there's even like outside the window, you can see some Wagyu. There's two, two Wagyu down there, which is Japanese cattle. And there's rice fields and potato farms and uh, just mountains and the uh, the bay is right here, Kagoshima Bay. And our friend Yamauchi san, he gave us a mango. He gifted one to us. Cute. <laughs> so we got more mango. Now we'll also show you around this place that we're staying. It's kind of cool. If you guys come to Japan, you can get this anywhere in Japan. You gotta try it. We got some mochi. Some local. They put everything in bags in Japan. Most of Asia, they put in bags. They use so many, so much plastic. Black sesame pudding. Jocelyn got some yogurt. The yogurt here isn't the best, but I just found that. And the English translation said that it was chewy, which I'm hoping just means thick. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll find out. Hopefully it's good because uh, Japanese yogurt is really runny and usually really sweet. And even I found the plain yogurt is kind of sweet too. Mentaiko. Mentaiko is uh cured cod roe. It's uh, very delicious, like a little spicy cured. We got some dried uh, sweet potato. I think this would be really good. There's a lot of sweet potato uh, things here. This one's like really sticky. This one's pretty dry. Mmm. Gummy texture and lightly sweet. I thought it'd be sweeter, but it's not very sweet at all actually for a sweet potato. 
Let's try this one. They look different, this one and that one. Oh, this one's even gummier, like, almost like a, like a gummy bear. Hmm. It's actually really good. Hmm. Try this one. Oh, well, after you finish that one. <laughs> Very sticky. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty sticky. Sweeter. Oh yeah, a little sweeter. Like a gummy bear, huh? Mm -hmm. Not like that's not a sweetness with gummy bear, but the texture. It's pretty good. Yeah. I like it. Made a quick and easy dinner, just kimchi fried rice. And we've just been working, but now it is time for a snack. And we will give you a tour of our place tomorrow morning because it's kind of dark now. All right, we're gonna try this mochi out, handmade mochi here in Kagoshima, topped with kinako. It's sweet potato flavor. Oh, no. Mm. You can hear the bugs outside. The country is alive. It just hurt my jaw. <laughs> Chewing? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. When I put it in my mouth, I just creep, oh. creeped my jaw. <laughs> Eating like the softest thing ever. <laughs> I hurt my jaw. <laughs> this is really good. It's soft. Um, not chewy as other mochi. It's, since it's mixed with the sweet potato. It's not the most uh, appetizing looking thing, but oh, it's like a more of a pudding texture. Yeah, very sweet potato-y. I see why it's pudding-y now. It's like mm. mostly sweet potato with probably a little bit of like the glutinous rice to make mochi. It's mm. good, huh? Mm hmm I knew it when I saw it looking like that. <laughs> I feel like it was handmade and it was going to be good. Oh. Wow, very sweet potato-y. Did not see that coming. Anyways, guys, we're gonna keep working and we'll see you guys in the morning. 5.30 a.m. just had a little rude awakening. This was on me. I don't know what it was. I went to brush it off and I just kind of felt it pinch at my hand. I kind of flung it and then started looking around to find out what I touched. Oh my gosh, well the situation has been neutralized, but those are scary, man. I, I don't even, I've never had to deal with one of those before. The internet says oh that they God. like to crawl up to Early. you for sleep with a preference for body cavities. Oh, they're, they're tough like the too. I didn't look, they just removed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, apparently their bite is super painful and you have to go see a doctor because they are Poisonous. That would have been sketchy. Good thing I woke you up too. You're just sleeping, and I was like, no, you I know. It was on me. <laughs> Felt wrong. And then I just kept sleeping, and then she actually found it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this time, oh, no, it's for real. No, those are those guys are not cool. <laughs> Very hard to kill. Even yeah, after it was being hard to kill. To bug spray, fire, and boiling water. Boiling water. And they in Japan apparently they're a symbol for evil. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Oh shoot. It's back from the dead. My gosh, look at Bosatsu. Ah, he's shocked too. <laughs> Probably was gonna be like either a little scorpion or one of those big beetles. Cause it just felt kind of big and. It felt like little claws. Mm, yeah. Like a bunch of little claws on you. Like Velcro. Velcro claws. Google says that their bite hurts ten times more than a bee sting. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know how I managed. Maybe I grabbed it by like the back or something. Ugh. And you just flung it? You yeah. I just like it? went to brush whatever was touching me. And then the moment I think my hand felt it, it just felt wrong and I went like that. Mm. Instead, and then I immediately woke up and I was trying to look around and I told Taku and he was just like, huh, oh, sleep. <laughs> and I was like, no, you need to wake up. That didn't feel right. <laughs> you wanted a Japanese countryside video. I know. <laughs> you guys haven't even seen the spider in our kitchen yet. <laughs> uh, our friend Fred. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty gross. I mean, he's locked in a cabinet, so they're safe. He's not going to crawl into bed with us. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be scary. Yeah, Japan's kind of worse than Australia. Okay, not worse, but... <laughs> in terms of things, they have a... Japan has a lot of bugs. Yeah. Yeah, it's a buggy place.
Yeah, you have to go to the hospital the for countryside. that Countryside. Damn. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. Gonna have to. Whoa, he's kind of stuck to the ground. Okay, we'll have to move this guy outside. I think he's dead, but who knows? Could come back to life. Raining pretty good outside. Yeah! Oh, jeez! So nearly ate it right there. Floor is slippery right there. So I'm gonna put a wet floor sign. What a way to start our morning. We actually managed to fall back to sleep after a really long time because it was only 5.30 a.m. Um, nothing else crawled into bed with us. <laughs> Within 24 hours, I both touched the best thing of my life, the little kittens, and the worst thing of my life, which was that scary centipede. And they are actually venomous, and we posted about it on our Instagram story. And some people have said that they've been bitten. One person said it was like getting hit by a fiery baseball. Fiery baseball bat. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see the spider? Oh yeah, you guys could meet him. All right, if you guys are scared of spiders, look away. He just lives in there. We leave him alone because he leaves us alone. He's respectful, stays in his home. Japan has huntsman spiders and we're pretty sure that's what he is, which they can grow up to a foot big, which is terrifying. Um, I thought they were just in Australia, but apparently they're here too. And for the most part, they're okay. I'm sure they can bite hard because they do hunt like rats when they're big enough. When the spider's big enough, not when the rat is big enough. But yeah, supposedly they're harmless to humans. Also, I don't know if it was just the rain being really loud, but for some reason the 6 a.m. alarm didn't go off for the town. We really wanted to show you guys that because it's the most annoying thing. It goes off every day at 6 a.m. for no reason. Um, I feel like when we were here last time a few years ago, it had like a whole announcement. Today would have been perfect because we were up at 5.30 a.m. for the stupid bug and very awake. <laughs> now we'll try again tomorrow. Taku's gonna go fish early morning, so we'll see. I might go fishing too, just cause I don't wanna be alone here. <laughs> Let's show you guys around where we're staying. It's pretty nice out here. Got some farm fields, cows. Got two of them down there. I think that might be a high school there and just some mountains. And it's just very quiet and peaceful here. The first room you walk into is basically what's our little work room right now. <laughs> and then, gotta take your shoes off before you go inside. Kind of see it all the way. Little paper doors. Let's go inside. Um, there are no chairs in here. Just kind of sit on these little very thin cushions. Yep, and you got these doors, these are all like traditional, very traditional kind of doors you see in Japan, all sliding, no locks. They connect to the next room. Oh yeah, the next room is our room. You can kind of see how easy it is for bugs to get into bed with you. Oh yeah, the view is pretty sweet. More farm and the ocean, volcano. Oh yeah, you can see pretty clear today. Yeah, today's uh, finally a nice day, a little windy, but. It's very choppy, it's very windy. This is the shower. And over here we have a super traditional bathtub. Look at this. For this bathtub, you apparently have to let them know you want to use it because they heat the water with wood. Just gonna get some work done. And then later tonight, we're actually gonna go to Yamasan's brewery. It's kind of funny in a small town, you tend to wear many hats. So he does the haircuts, he does the brewery, roast coffee, and he is also a rice farmer. We'll see you guys either for lunch or the brewery. <laughs> At the brewery. Oh, I think you could've got it all in. <laughs> it is right there. No. <laughs> Come by. Bye. 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 Yeah, we're gonna check out his brewing station, and he's gonna pour us one straight from 
the tank. And he's doing, uh, he's got a matcha, matcha ale. Matcha ale. Just the way doing okay. Okay. So this beer is in collaboration with one of the top um, tea companies here in Kagoshima. And yeah, that's what, that's he making this, he's making this whole barrel of matcha ale. Oh, also, now my brother and his fiance, Arisa, are, have joined us. <laughs> and my dad. He's our designated driver. <laughs> should I drink or should I wait till it gets No, you drink, you drink. No, the way you drink it is like you put the foam up to your lip and you tilt it until you get the lick, the actual... But don't like suck in the foam, you suck in this. You got it. No, 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 you gotta block the foam. I don't understand. <laughs> you have to block the foam with your like like this. You get under the foam. You gotta get under there. Like this? I can taste it. Yeah. Mm. Mache. Refreshing. It is mache. Yeah. Why do you have to block the foam instead of waiting for the foam, foam to leave? You can if you want to. The foam keeps the carbonation in. That's why you have the head to keep the carbonation in. That's a learned that in the Guinness factory. There's the 6 a.m. wake up alarm. I'm just leaving to go uh, go out to go fish for the day. Um, yeah, there it is, 6 a.m. Loud ass alarm. <laughs> Every day. We're at the onsen because while there's not a whole lot to do on the countryside, there is always an onsen. We're at this local onsen by my dad's house, and um, they have like a regular public bath areas which has like a ton of different bath and uh, there's also some private ones they're called kazokuburo family room private on, uh, onsen so this is what it looks like all the onsens you got to bring your own like shower supplies and such just, like shampoos and stuff actually this one has shampoos but most of the times you got to bring your own so there's this onsen right here just like the bath and then you always have to before you go in you gotta make sure you shower first, get all clean, and then you go in to the tub. And so this is a pretty small one here, but yeah, it's a private one, so both of us can go in out in the same one. All right, that was a nice session. They give you about an hour to uh, in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're gonna make some okonomiyaki and takoyaki tonight uh, with the family. So. A little party, because your brother's here, Taka's here. Yes. Little family reunion. Yes, my sister's here, my dad's here. We're all here except for my younger brother. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna head over to the store. All right, we're back at our place. About to do some prep work for dinner. But first, let me tell you guys a little story that Yama-san shared with us. And it has to do with the centipedes. So if you find those creepy crawlies really horrifying, this is a horrible story and you should probably skip this part. So we told him about our centipede experience and he told us that when he was asleep, a centipede crawled into his ear, which I did see that mentioned online that they like to go into like your nose or your ears. Terrifying. And um, he tried to smoke it out and well, at first he was sleeping, and then he woke up and he felt like something coming, like in his ear. He thought maybe his brain is melting, <laughs> it's falling out of his ear. And then so he, his wife checked it for him, and then you could see the back legs of the centipede oh, so uh, sticking gross. out of his ear. So they tried to pull it out, didn't work. They tried to use a vacuum, suction him out, didn't work. Went in further, oh. and then they tried, they tried to smoke it out and that didn't work either either <laughs> and so they made a hot bath dunk his head in the bath and it came out and he said it just stiffened up and died in hot water Ugh. yeah terrible awful story <laughs> countryside japan guys so going to sleep last night was a lot of fun 
having that story in mind. And hopefully that doesn't happen to us, because he also said the sound of it crawling around in there was like the worst thing ever. So let's hope we make it through countryside Japan without an incident, and uh, let's get cooking. So I went fishing this morning, fished from 6 a.m. to noon, nothing. I went fishing for squid. When you can't catch them, you gotta buy them. <laughs> Look at this big thing. This is a big squid, and this is what we're going for. This is potentially what we could catch, and uh, the store sells locally caught seafood, so at least that's good, but it's price tag. It's pretty expensive. 4,000 yen, it's almost uh, $40. So, should have caught it myself, could have saved some money, but <laughs> at least we got one. There was only one at the store. really want to catch this guy. <laughs> I forgot how to prep this squid. I have to watch my own video <laughs> from four years ago. Cabbage is almost done. This one's full. Talk to the of my cabbage cutting skills. Very nice. That's perfect. This place only has two mixing bowls. It's a little hard. It's alright. Look at that. It's getting there. Okay. This one's pretty full already. Got our first one of many. Made this one special with okra. I love okra. And okonomiyaki, it's very good. If you haven't tried that, gotta try it. You can find okonomiyaki and takoyaki all over Japan, but the best place is probably Osaka. It's definitely Osaka. <laughs> it's definitely Osaka. <laughs> So we have a takoyaki over here, and we have more okonomiyaki in here, because yeah. there's a lot of us. kind of like the hot pockets of Japan, you have to eat them lava hot. Yeah, takoyaki with ika, uh, with the squid tentacles. That's really good. It works. It works with squid tentacles. It's very similar to octopus, the texture. Takoyaki, one of my favorite all-time street foods. You gotta go to Osaka and try it. Yeah, you really can't come to Japan without having takoyaki and okonomiyaki, but especially takoyaki because in the U.S. it's always frozen. You'll get it fresh here. A great combination is okonomiyaki and beer. All right, that's gonna be everything for this countryside video. Next, we'll be taking you guys on a little road trip around Kyushu.